Consumerism is not a pathway to joy and meaning in life. This is not a new revelation. In fact, we all know it to be true. If specifically asked the question, nobody would ever say that the secret to a meaningful life is to buy a lot of stuff. In our hearts, we know that we were made for something bigger and something more significant than mere consumption. Nobody really believes that happiness is directly tied to the number of things we own, but almost all of us live like it. We never intentionally set out to buy more than we need or spend more than we make. But here's the problem. Mindless consumption always turns into excessive consumption. How then might we begin to rethink and challenge mindless consumerism in our lives? Consider this intentional approach. Number one, stop and reevaluate. Look at the life you have created. Are you finding the time, money, and energy for the things that matter most? Or have your possessions become a burden on your life in any way? Slow down long enough to honestly evaluate the whole picture, your income, your mortgage, your car payment, your spending habits, your day-to-day -day pursuits. Are you happy? Or is there perhaps a better way? Number two, resist copying other people. Just because your neighbors, classmates, friends, or family members are chasing a certain style of life doesn't mean that you need to as well. Your life is too unique to live like everyone else. And if you think you'll be happier by following all the latest trends in society, you are wrong. Just ask anybody who has stopped. Number three, understand your weaknesses. Recognize your trigger points. Are there certain stores that prompt unnecessary purchases in your life? Are there products, addictions, or pricing patterns like clearance sales that prompt an automatic response from you? Maybe there are certain emotions like sadness or loneliness or grief that give rise to mindless consumption in your life. Identify, recognize, and understand these weaknesses. 90% of the solution can be found in simply recognizing the problem. Number four, look deep into your motivations. Advertisers play on our motivations by appealing to our desires in subtle ways. Marketing is no longer based on communicating facts about a product. Instead, they promise adventure or reputation, esteem, fulfillment, or romance. So what inner motivations are subconsciously guiding your purchases? What unhealthy motivations like greed or envy need to be rooted out? And what healthy motivations like meaning or significance need to find their fulfillment elsewhere? Number five, seek contribution with your life and usefulness in your purchases. To live is to consume. As contributing members of society, we're gonna work and earn and purchase and consume. But we are more than consumers, we are contributors. Our presence on this earth ought to bring value to the people around us. And so purchase only what you need to more effectively accomplish your unique role in this world. Everything else is just a distraction. Just because you can buy something doesn't mean you should. A sixth way to challenge consumerism in your life is to count the hidden cost of each purchase. Too often when we purchase an item, we only look at the sticker price, but this is rarely the full cost. Our purchases always cost more. They require our time, our energy, our focus. They prompt worry and stress and attachment. Henry David Thoreau said it best, the price of anything is the amount of life that you exchange for it. Number seven, test your limits. Experiment in some way with a no shopping challenge. 
go 30 days with no consumer purchases, 60 days without visiting a mall, or go 120 days without buying new clothes. You set the terms. Even the world's biggest shopper can find one experiment to test their boundaries. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. You'll break the cycle of shopping in the short term and you'll lay the groundwork for greater victory in the long term. Number eight, give more things away. Your life will feel lighter, your heart will feel warmer, the world will be better, and you will be reminded that shopping is not the answer. And number nine, do more of what makes you truly happy. Your possessions are not making you happy. Once our basic needs have been met, the happiness found in consumerism is fleeting at best. Instead, find what it is that truly makes you happy and do more of it. I find my happiness in faith, family, friends, and contribution. Your list may be different, but either way, owning a whole bunch of stuff is certainly not on it. So make intentionality your highest pursuit, not consumerism.